We will be counting down the top 10 swords for Ayaka. I've also made this amazing tool for you that compares every single sword at every single refinement, and we'll get into that in just a bit. If you're new here, hello, I'm Hashing. I suck at the game, so I compensate with knowledge. Subscribe for knowledge! Now sit back, leave a like, and make a guess in the comments which weapon do you think is number one on the list. Let's get right into it. Number 10. Sophonia's Sword. Ayaka's burst contributes to over half of her overall damage, so being able to ult on every rotation instead of every other one is going to improve your damage by a huge margin. The passive of the Sophonia's Sword, which has 60% to 100% chance of giving you energy particles when Ayaka crits, which synergizes really well with her because you would naturally have high crit rate if you use the Blizzard set and have Cryo Resonance in your team. The Sacrificial Sword also serves a similar function, but instead it has a chance to reset Ayaka's skill core down and generate some cryo particles that way. It does also make Ayaka's A1 passive uptime a bit better, but because the passive is not guaranteed to proc and its cooldown is so long, it is much worse than the Fafonia Sword's passive. If we only look at damage, these two are at the bottom of the barrel. But again, Ayaka might need a lot of energy to keep her powerful ult charged. Number 9. Black Cliff Longsword the crit damage substat on Black Cliff Longsword looks really good to balance out the huge amounts of crit rate the Blizzard set and Cryo Resonance gives. Plus, it's free to play friendly. It is actually the highest DPS sword for Ayaka among the 4 stars at max stacks, but the reason it only landed on the 9th spot is that it only performs slightly better than the ER weapons at 0 stack. This sword requires you to defeat an enemy to gain stacks, which makes the sword good at dealing with small mobs, but pretty useless against larger enemies and bosses, which Ayaka is actually designed to be good at, to deal immense single target damage. There are better options than this one. Number 8, Lion's Roar. You might ask, what is this sword doing here? Because its passive doesn't work with a freeze team at all. Well, you're right, and I'm not suggesting you play a melt team, but the stats on this one are actually really good, with an attack percent substat, which already makes it one of the best 4-star weapons. And though situational, you do deal extra damage to these enemies, so if you already have this upgraded, this might be the weapon for you. But let's look at something even better. Number 7, the flute. If you didn't know, the flute's base stats are identical to those of Lion's Roar, but with a generally usable passive. I said usable, not good, because while the flute synergizes well with Ayaka's playstyle, its passive deals physical damage, and it's not that much either. But at least you can actually proc it consistently against any enemies, and adds a little bit more damage for Ayaka, which is really nice. Number 6, the Black Sword. The Black Sword makes reaching high crit rate or even 100% crit rate easier, so you can double down on crit damage in your artifact main and substats. Its passive synergizes pretty well with Ayaka's playstyle, boosting her normal and charge attack damage, but unfortunately doesn't do anything with her other massive damage source, which would be her ult. Though the second part of the passive also synergizes really well with Ayaka, which heals her when she crits on a 5 second cooldown. As long as you keep attacking and dodge pretty well, while keeping enemies frozen most of the time, you can definitely rely on the Black Sword's healing and maybe along with Xing Chu's damage reduction and healing, and run to other offensive characters to improve your overall team damage that way. So in the end, this sword is not bad at all. Now, I know I've been pretty harsh on these 4-star weapons, but they are actually really good options. If you already have any of these upgraded, you might be good to go. But we can do even better. Number 5, Summit Shaper. This one is really straightforward. It's loaded with tons of attack in its main stat, substat, and even its passive. I mean, I guess that's what it takes to cut rocks. The passive also makes your shield thicker, but also requires you to actually have a shield to fully benefit from its effect, which is fine if you have Diona and manage to shield well or fit Zhongli into your team somehow, but then your team building options will be really restricted. It still does provide a ton of stats even without a shield, so it is still better in terms of damage than the other 4-star weapons earlier and becomes one of the best if you do have a shield on it. Ayaka. Number 4, Primordial Jade Cutter. The Jade Cutter looks amazing at first glance. Its crit rate substat is really high at over 44%. Its passive makes Ayaka tankier through bonus HP, and it converts HP into attack as well. The problem with this sword is it gives too much crit rate if you run this with the Blizzard Strayer set. 5% base, 44% from the weapon, 40% from the Blizzard set, and 15% from the Cryo Resonance puts you at 104% crit rate. Although if you're considering the new artifacts from Inazuma for Ayaka, the Jade Cutter would pair really well with them. To be fair, this sword isn't really designed for Ayaka, but overall, the Primordial Jade Cutter is amazing. There are no conditions to access its full potential, and puts your unfortunate HP rolls on your artifacts to actually good use. But let's look at some swords that actually synergize well with Ayaka. Number 3, Skyward Blade. 
Technically, this weapon is quite bad in terms of offensive stats. It actually does a bit less damage than these 4-star weapons from earlier if we are just comparing offensive stats. But if I haven't stressed the importance of energy recharge on Ayaka enough, well, it's very important. The Skyward Blade also gives you a stingy amount of crit rate, and after casting Ayaka's burst, she would gain extra movement speed, extra attack speed, and extra damage for her normal and charge attacks. You're not gonna see the biggest numbers with this sword, but pressing ult on cooldown is really satisfying. Number 2. Miss Splitter's Reflection This sword is going to be on the weapon banner, which usually means it's the best in slot for the current banner 5 star. So let's take a look at what this weapon is all about. It has very high base attack and crit damage in its substats, which complements Freeze Ayaka's naturally high crit rate very well. If we take a look at its passive, it grants extra elemental damage, plus a stack mechanic called Mist Splitter's Emblem. It stacks up to 3, giving 8%, 16%, and 28% extra elemental damage at each stack. And as to how you gain these stacks, there are 3 conditions, with each condition only giving 1 stack and their duration are separate from each other. You would gain 1 stack for 5 seconds when you hit an enemy with an elemental infused normal attack, which Ayaka can easily achieve. You gain 1 stack for 10 seconds after casting the character's ult, and 1 stack whenever your ult energy is not fully charged. If you're not sure how to max out these stacks, the playstyle and combo I talked about in this video should work very well. This weapon grants all of the right stats for Ayaka, and it's pretty hard to beat. And with the new pity system, you are guaranteed to get it at some point, but it's still really expensive. Before we get to number 1, here are some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list, but they're definitely good in their own right. The Skyrider Sword has ER subsets with a passive that goes well with it, and does a bit more damage than the Favonia Sword. Really good if you like to spam ults and just starting out. The passive on the Cool Steel just works, unless you're against this bunch. Plus it's very cool. And the Harbinger of Dawn, technically the best out of the honorable mentions, but a bit risky to run without a healer on your team. And finally, we have number 1, and it's the Aminoma Blade? Not only it is free to play friendly as a craftable weapon, if we only look at its base stats, this sword performs similarly to Lion's Roar and the Flute, and just ever so slightly behind the Black Sword. But the passive on the Amenoma that grants energy is where it pulls way ahead. And with this sword, whenever you cast your elemental skill, you gain one succession seed up to three. And when you cast your ult, you consume the seeds, and each seed will give you some energy back. You're not going to see the biggest numbers with the Amenoma Blade, but you can sure spam more ults because of the extra energy you are getting. And the most important thing is, it's a katana. It only makes sense Ayaka would wield a katana, right? If you would like to compare every single sword and every single refinement, I've made a chart that does just that. I've posted it on my Discord as well, link is in the pinned comments, so go check it out. If you want to know how strong Ayaka is, go check out this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!